Hey everyone, today we are tearing down the Sapphire RX 5700 XT Pulse. This card got a pretty good review from us in our review. We talked about how massively improved the cooler was over the reference design. The reference design ran something like 27 degrees warmer at 40 dBA just for the GPU edge temperature. That's not even counting the other components like the memory, which was borderline unsafe with the reference design at 40 dBA. So this was hugely improved. As stated in the review, we have no problem recommending this particular version of the 5700 XT. We haven't tested other 5700 XT partner models yet, but the Pulse is in territory where at $10 more in theory than the uh, reference price. It's good enough that any further gains might not really be meaningful. So today we're going to take it apart and see what it looks like underneath and how the cooler is connected. Before that, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte's X570 Master Motherboard. The X570 Master is what we use for all of our Ryzen 3000 CPU reviews and for extreme overclocking streams with the 3900X. The Master is built to handle more current than you'll push through your Ryzen CPUs. It has actual finned heat sinks for the VRMs, and it features a massively overhauled Gigabyte BIOS. Pick up the X570 Master for your Ryzen 3000 CPU at the link in the description below. So here's the card. We talked about it in the review already. If you want numbers, go there. But the very basics of it, if you missed any of that, it's got a BIOS switch. Unfortunately, that means this massive cutout in the backplate, but that's okay. So BIOS switch, the position towards the front of the card, away from the back of the computer, that's the default position. And that one runs a more aggressive fan profile. It's a bit under 40 dBA in our 20 inch uh, distance testing, so really not bad. The back position is the less aggressive profile, sticks to around 1000 RPM with a higher temperature target and lower frequency. So that's the switch. We like to see those. And these reference card did not have a BIOS switch. They typically used to, so it was kind of disappointing to see. But Sapphire picked up the ball where AMD dropped it. And then the front, these are 100 millimeter fans. 100 millimeter fans are what MSI has used for its Gaming X coolers as well. And we found those work very well on MSI's Gaming X for noise normalized thermals. And no surprise, this one did very well in noise normalized thermals also. And the way uh, doing 100 millimeter fans does mean that they have to make the card taller. Sometimes companies will actually make the PCB larger and utilize that extra space. So if the company knows it's going to need a one inch taller cooler to accommodate 100 millimeter fans, which allow it to them to spin slower and thus quieter while moving more air or equivalent air to a smaller, faster fan, the companies will sometimes extend the PCB and make the VRM much larger. Uh, but I think, and we'll find out once we open this, I think Sapphire is using the reference board from AMD, which would be this one. So if that's the case, then it would make sense that, well, maybe not. We'll see. Actually, it looks like they aren't. thought they were going to. So the reason I thought they were going to is because a lot of the time to hit the initial launch target, the companies will use a reference PCB design from AMD or NVIDIA just to hit that launch, and then they'll build the cooler around it and make these extensions and things to fit it all. But you can see this PCB from AMD is much longer. And you've got all this dead space on the PCB where the VRM blower fan goes. And that situates roughly here. So that's why that dead space is there on the reference design. But it is also dead space. And it looks like Sapphire cut that out. All right, so we probably start opening this thing up. It's uh, aluminum fins, fans, and heat pipes. Pretty standard design. We are going to use the Gamers Nexus Toolkit for this, the GPU Teardown Toolkit. We specifically made it to accommodate pretty much every GPU on the market or video card, I should say. So if you want to pick one of these up for your own teardowns, like if you're repacing GPUs or something, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and grab our toolkit. It's got uh, all the tools you would typically need for a video card. And we did focus pretty hard on quality for these. So they're chromium vanadium steel for the tool tips, except for the hex heads, which uh, these are an A3 steel, but that's because we actually bought these separately and then ground down the head of the tip so that it can fit and clear um, capacitors and small devices on the board. But anyway, screws, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven PH1 size screws, it looks like. So these are Phillips. Uh, they are spring tensioned, which is Kind of nice, not necessary, but uh, rare to see for non-GPU screws and should fix some of the mounting tension issues that AMD had originally. It also looks like these two are going into the shroud, whereas the rest are going through the P2 
PCB and then the probably the base plate. Some of these are slightly different sizes, so I've spaced them out on the mod mat so we can put them back later properly. Um, you can pick this up on the store as well. It's just stored at gamersnexus.net for the mod mat. It's an anti-static build surface and uh, also just nice for organizing screws and stuff. Okay, so that gets the back plate loose. And, or it should. Breather, yeah, there we go. And they've got a thermal pad on there. That's more than AMD did. So a small thermal pad on the back of what's probably the inductor line, maybe the MOSFET line. It looks like it's about two millimeters thick. And then another one for a controller. Let's get the PCB size difference. Here's AMD's original PCB. It's roughly 26 and a half centimeters, 10 and a half inches if you prefer. And Sapphire's is about almost 23 centimeters or nine inches. Uh, but the card itself is a bit longer because of the shroud. The card itself ends up closer to what? Uh, I guess we just measure the back plate. Card's closer to 25. If you're looking for, for clearance in your case, that would be what you need to clear. And then, oh, thermal pad thickness. Just for point of reference, if you wanted to replace these later, you would need to get the same size so that it's tall enough. Yep, two millimeters. Called that one. Yeah, they're technically, this one's a little bit smaller, but roughly two millimeters for those, maybe one and a half for the other. Let's see what that controller is. Oh, that's nice, wow. Comes apart really fast, I like that. IR35217, this is the same controller we've seen on uh, quite a few of the AMD cards in the past. So 35217 for the controller, and then We've already disconnected the shroud. Uh, typically we disconnect the cooler first, but I left those four screws in. And we can get the shroud out. So there's that. There's what the card looks like without the fans. Different view from what we normally see first. And, ooh, these look like they might be pretty nice. Uh, one screw, okay. What I'm trying to see is if these fans are built so that you can just, it's a pin to pad contact instead of a cable. I think it might be. Oh yeah, that is really nice. So I'm a big fan of this. XFX does it as well with some of their coolers. Uh, they did it with the Ghost for the, 500, or the, the Vega 50 series or RX 500 series maybe. So the way, it, it's very simple. It's just pins and then a socket on this time aside, sometimes I do pins and pads. The reason this is nice is pretty simple. There's no extra cable. So you saw how easy that was. It's one screw to get the fan out, which is more than XFX did on that one design. To XFX's credit, that was a pretty good design. It was just, theirs was a clip and you just pull it out. But this one's a bit more secured. I, I'm not really sure if there's a better or worse, but either way, it just sockets in. So if you wanted to replace the fans, if you had one die or something in the future, a couple of years from now, maybe once it's clogged with dust. You could either buy a replacement probably from AliExpress and I'll give you the model number if you want to do that. Or you can email Sapphire and see if they'll just give you a replacement fan rather than RMA in the entire card and be in a couple weeks without your card for a fan replacement. If you wanted to buy the fan yourself, model number is FD10015, let's show it off camera, M12D, that is the model. It's a 12 volt fan as you would expect and it is I think that's a 0 0.45 amps. Uh, this one was made July 20th. It's pretty new, actually. And that is by NTK Limited, NTK HK Limited. So if you wanted to replace the fan, that's what you'd do. Let me put this one back in before we continue on. They even have the pinout labeled in there, probably for, for assembly and validation, but nice to see that as well. So if you bought a different one from this that fits and you wanted to make sure it's not going to destroy itself with the wrong pinout. You could check versus the pinout they've included. All right, there's the fans and the shroud. Very simple. Set that aside. The heat sink is pretty big, and that's what we want to see. Heat pipes, we'll count them once we get in there completely. 
Uh, there's a small base plate down here. It does not actually contact the, the PCB at this point. It's just for structure and, and support. You'd see right there, there's a, a screw point there, a screw point there. Fairly dense aluminum fins, and then copper heat pipes that are nickel plated. Let's go ahead and pull the rest of this off. And it looks like Sapphire did elect to use all four, or both sets of four screws for retention. They could opt for only one if they wanted, but that should support it a bit better. So we'll organize these screws on the mod mat as well. There's a medium mod mat too that's actually got GPU teardown diagrams on it and stuff. That one's in stock now if you wanted to pick it up, but that's, uh, that's on the store as well. It's about half the size of this one. All right, so five more screws. WD, not sure what that stands for. <laughs> Doesn't say warranty void if removed. So that's good. We hate those, mostly because they're illegal. Uh, the stickers that is in the US. So we got uh, W and D are both destroyed now. They might just be tamper seals. EVGA does that too, where it's got an EVGA sticker on it, but they won't void the warranty if you go through it. Now we can separate the PCB from the card. So no cables left at this point. We've already disconnected it. It was down here. And there's the separate base plate. That's kind of a, a this is different. Wow, this is actually really different. That's interesting. Okay. It tricked me. At first I thought just the base plate was just this thing and this thing. But then notice the fins. So they've got a small set of fins. Let's see, is it connected to... They're not connected to the main part of the cooler, which is really interesting. So a couple things here. Um, first of all, the MOSFETs, inductors, things like that, don't need to run that cool, which is evidenced by the fact that these inductors aren't even contacting a heat sink. And that's fine. MOSFETs can do something like 125, 150 degrees Celsius, depending on the model. We clocked these at 40 dBA at, off the top of my head, somewhere in the 70s. So they are completely within reason for uh, the thermal measurement. And then um, you start looking at the memory. Memory is a bit of a different story. We don't have a clear answer on where GDDR6's boundaries lie, but it's between 95 and 105 degrees Celsius, kind of where you, you don't feel comfortable anymore for temperature on that. And um, that's cooled separately. That did fine testing as well. So basically what they've done is it looks like fully isolate the heat sink. Yes. So the GPU heat sink is entirely isolated from these other heat sinks for the uh, smaller components on the card. And that means the GPU is not really sharing its cooling solution with those. So you're not sinking the extra heat from all these components into the GPU heat sink and uh, sharing the cooling capabilities, which might be why we saw the, the good thermals that we did across the board. Sometimes this design doesn't work. We've seen Zotac do stuff like this and it was bad, but it just depends on how they cool it. Because ultimately these are getting airflow through the fin stack from the fans above and they just sock it into these channels right here. So because it all kind of fits together and air still gets down there, they're able to dissipate the heat. Let's pull all this off. Okay, lost some of the thermal pads there, but so that's pretty simple. It's interesting they've even got grooves in the base plate for installation of the thermal pads. Micron, wow. Well, our memory performed better than uh, the 5700 XT we had, which used I think Samsung memory, this is on Micron, but we got luckier with this card, it, it pushed higher. We could hold 950 megahertz sometimes, uh, always pretty much held 935 minimum. So good memory on this one, luck of the draw on that. And then the components, SIC620A for the MOSFETs. As far as phases go, this one used uh, the reference design for AMD used an on semi FD MF 3170, not 3470, 3170 was the original. So it is a different PRM. So Buildzoid hasn't done this board yet. We'll send him photos and uh, he could do it for our channel if he feels like it. And if so, we'll have a video up on the VRM quality if it's a new VRM that he hasn't looked at yet. 
And otherwise, I mean, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. It's, I guess we can just go ahead and clean off the die because why not? But it's not going to have any text on it. AMD doesn't do that. So there's the die. So the die is a little bit redder on this one. I'm not sure if that's, I, I, I don't think they, they did not lap the die. I mean, they don't do that. But what it might be is either it's a silicon manufacturing variance, which is possible, or also possible, the copper has somewhat plated the die or stained it, which we've seen in the past as well. So probably not super significant. But uh, anyway, oh, also there's a little bumper here, maybe for vibration or just to keep, keep clearance from the GPU so it doesn't get cracked. Uh, so yeah, that's the cooler heat pipes we've got. I think these are six mil. Yep, six millimeter heat pipes here. So one goes through right here through the cold plate. This is what you, you want is having more heat pipes isn't better. What you want is more surface area contact of the full heat pipe to the GPU. And you can see here there's almost three heat pipes contacting the GPU directly. So I've got one going through here. Another one goes over this way through the first part of the finned heat sink. Another one here. So we are now up to one, two, three, four, five heat pipes for this design. Sometimes you'll see some extra ones over here that aren't attached to the GPU, but that's not the case for this. And then a copper cold plate, which is um, not perfectly polished, but that's okay. Sometimes you could make an argument that a slight roughness on the surface is actually better depending on what you're doing. Uh, for example, with CPU lapping, if you have some slight roughness, like if you get some scotch bright and scuff it up a bit, it'll give the thermal paste better grit, something more to grab onto, which is useful for things like extreme cold. But anyway, it doesn't really matter at this point. The cooler does well. We already know that. So that's the card. That's the cooler. The PCB will ask Buildzoid if he wants to cover it. And a very interesting, slightly unique design with this layout. It's not something we see really ever. We don't work with a ton of Sapphire cards. I'm not sure if they've done that recently, but kind of cool to see. So that's Sapphire's 5700 XT Pulse. We already reviewed it. Again, it's on the channel. Gaming performance, basically no difference from the reference design, but everything else, like how loud it is, massively different in a good way. It's a lot of quality of life improvements. And then you could just, this, this allows you some extra room for a hotter case too, where you might get some down clocking with the reference design. So that'll cover the card. Check our review for additional coverage on it. Again, we'll send PCB over to Buildzoid, see if he actually cares about it or if he's already done this one. And you can pick up the toolkit I used today on store.gamersnexus.net if you would like one of those. And you can also pick up the mod mat on the store as well or uh, the shirt I'm wearing, which is almost out of stock at this point. It's the foil wireframe shirt that we just put up. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.